relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But if it gets you better, you, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good, but this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me. You know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school. 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. What's up? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolutions being podcasted. And I am excited. We nice. got a special show tonight. Nice. And we are in the studio. Uh, this is crazy. For the I'm, first time since the pandemic. Since since the end of the world, we survived. How you doing, Harry? You good? I'm doing good, and I'm happy to be in the studio. I'm glad to see you, man. I, we don't... We don't even see each other yeah, as much. Well, you know, life it's happens, crazy. brother. Life happens. Uh, and you had that baby and shit. Yeah, well, that well, gets in I, the way. That don't get in the way of oh, shit. Never me. mind. So it's just me uh, then. Yeah, it's just you. <laughs> it's just you. Uh, shout out to Andre. Andre. Andre's writing and shit. Uh, we got to trying to get him back in here, but he's been working so hard, and we're really proud of him. Of course. Um, shout out to him. But we'll That's get right. him in. I got. A, I actually got a message about when's Andre coming back. Oh, they're looking for Andre? Yeah, yeah. we miss Andre. We miss him, too. I mean, we miss everybody, but how you feeling? You good? Yeah, man, good. I'm ready to rock and roll, man. Happy uh, to be inside. Yeah. A tough time keeping these gators down. It is difficult. Uh, Glad to not be broadcasting out of my dad's garage. Yeah. That's well, nice. Yeah, That's yeah, a nice yeah. change. Yeah. I mean, I was in this studio. So yeah, like, so whatever. it was fine for you. Yeah, you that's care. always good for me. Uh, we got a special show. Now, I know I've said that uh, 400 times before, but this time we got a special guest. And uh, this time you mean it. Yeah, I mean it. I mean it this time. I, I was lying all the other times, but this time I mean it. Uh, you want to do the intro? You That's do the right. Intro? Why not? Uh, the fantastic, the lovely, the talented, the patient, Katie Boyle. Everybody. Yes, patient. Because we were not ready to get. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Katie. I. That's okay. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, Good to be here. She's such a sweetie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm going to oh. like this already. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The interview? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to like this already. Um, I was a little distracted. and I feel like I didn't give her the due welcome that I, would, that I would normally do because we've been trying to set up everything. And, and, and uh, how are you? I'm good. It's yeah. Good. Very relaxed. It's good. 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 You want a beer? No. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Said nobody with that accent ever. Um. Oh, that's the first for you, Dante. <laughs> some of them, some stereotype Irish. my people. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, is it really? Is it really? Well, you're. I. Well, it depends on what beer. I don't really like your beer. It makes me feel bloated. And then, secondly, it should be a treat. So it's too early for me. Oh. oh. I have a show later. So it's okay. Not till after. Oh, you don't drink before you go out. No, never. So you got to be straight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool enough. How long you been doing comedy? Six years. Okay. Yeah. I'm a baby. Oh, I feel like mm, mm, mm. that's great. I remember those years when I had hope. Oh uh, Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> She's, oh yeah. Year year eight is when the hope starts to dip. Starts to you get that. Yeah, but I'm an immigrant, so well, oh you. So oh, okay. I probably did more. <laughs> you did what? You got twelve years Im in. You. Immigrants, you come over and you just go, 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 go. Like I was working three jobs while doing stand up every night, so I got that so, mentality. Because you leave your family at home, so you're like, I gotta, so I gotta you, make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so that that was your whole thing to come here and, and be a comic. Like you were, I'm going to New York. How long did you do comedy in? Uh, I, what? Where did Ireland. you start? No, I actually started here, so there wasn't. <laughs> oh wow! So you, I came here to be an artist, and I worked at Moma PS One for a bit, and I hated it. And what then, kind of art? I uh, used to do video. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, like, 
like uh, pieces, like video pieces, or, or, or like yeah. what kind of stuff? Um, I did stuff on like communication and talking. It was all like conceptual and tone of voice. Oh, really? And then I just started watching comedy shows here, and I was like, actually, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. You went to school for that? Yeah, yeah, I went to school. For so, that. what kind? Of, like, uh, like I don't even know how you how you get to that place where you're doing these video kind of conceptual pieces and stuff. You just it's just years of college and trying different stuff and then you're like, Oh, this is I like doing this and it's all really mental to be yeah. honest. But now do you film in and, and edit it or you have somebody else film it and you have your your vision uh, to No, I did everything. Oh, everything. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. And and like what do you shoot with? Like what what kind of what would you shoot with? Like DS Um D S L R but yeah. like I haven't done it in like Really? Years, oh, yeah. so you've been uh, just, just solely comedy, comedy yeah. for the last six years. Yeah, that's how, awesome. That's how awesome. was your family with that? Were they supportive of the art? Um, yeah, they were like, whatever. I guess it's good you're not doing drugs. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> good, good standards. Yeah, good standards. I have a good relationship with my dad. Oh, so. okay. Wow. All right. That'll. But how did you end up the, doing comedy then? Uh, I, I just saw a girl. By law. Well, I just saw a girl doing it, and I was like, I want to do that. I hadn't really watched comedy in Ireland, and never, I, I or, never saw or women. Never. I saw Daryl Breen's hour special, but uh-huh. that was it. I never, I didn't have an interest in it at all. I really? Never thought. And not none of the you never watched the the American comics or anything like that. No. Who watched? Who did you watch? And you were like, I, 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 I want to do that. Just a regular comedian. Her name is Maria Wojciechowski. It was at Over the Eight, which is close uh-huh. now. And I just went to a show and I was like, oh, she's hilarious. And wow. I think she was only a woman on the lineup. Right. And then I was like, I want to do this. And that was it. Oh, that's dope. That's yeah. really dope. It's just, it's interesting because, um, you know, like I, I grew up, like I was a little kid and I used to stay, I used to like, so they had before fallon jimmy fallon and stuff was uh, was uh johnny carson and I, know, and I used to stay up late like sneak out and i would like sneak up to my mom's and dad's bedroom and and peek through the crack in the door to watch to, just to see the stand-up comedian yeah. like so i grew up kind of always wanting to do it you know yeah i think i had like a small phase for of tommy tiernan where i watched a bunch of his youtube clips when i was 17 but that was it it was uh, never i always wanted to be an artist wow. since i was like i was drawn before i was talking so what was the difference uh what what was the difference in the medium like what why did you what what did you like about it well so if you're making an art piece it's kind of isolating and i love talking to people i'm very sociable uh-huh. and then it takes three or four months before you can put it into a gallery space before you can get criticism on it mm-hmm. unless you're in college where you can get weekly criticism but then when i started doing comedy you could find out straight away if a joke is oh yeah good it's or bad. so instantaneous and yeah. here in new york you can just go to another place try it out to say in the same night i felt like you could fix a joke and yeah, so I just so it's more, that kind of you like that immediate yeah. Uh, response. Yeah, I, I it's funny because um, you know I've done some acting here and some some you know made some feature films and stuff like that, and I never really liked the acting because of that because it you so accustomed to this instantaneous response back that you okay, this is like you say you can fix it right then in a the moment but even if you don't fix it just the fact that you get the response back whereas with acting you you act and you shoot the film and they edit it and then you're waiting for it to come out and then you have no idea i mean i had i had uh two major films where i just got edited out 100 percent so like big ones yeah, too yeah yeah big. i had uh john wick 2 um had a big part in that and got edited out because of that bitch Ruzi, Ruby Rose. I don't know who her agent is. The, the chick who played uh, Batman, and she was like the gender fluid chick from um, Orange is the Orange Black. Orange is the New Black. Yeah, yeah, and she just they rewrote the whole movie for her, basically. Oh, wow. So she she just had I don't know who her agent was, but but you know you t- you you look at these things and you you go okay this is gonna be the thing that's gonna move my career forward and and then it's just not the way comedy is that that here's the joke what do you think yeah it's a it's a it's a really cool thing um so you got katie also has a very cool instagram page i like her instagram page and it's a you do a podcast as well right yeah yeah N- what is the podcast it's called the shift it's about sex state and relationships with the cultural difference of here to home because yeah. it was a big culture shock for me so. really in yeah. what way in what way um in lots of ways okay. oh my god firstly i've had men ask me to do things i didn't even know there were things that you like to do what do you mean sexually yes yeah, sexually. Um, what are some of those things like what is a, a well, thing that you wouldn't have known about until well, somebody asked 
And if like, okay, well, firstly, I've heard my fair amount of sex in Ireland. In okay. Ireland, you kind of portray that you've had less than what you have because uh-huh. it's a bit shameful for women. Right. Sure, sure. Uh, like, I didn't start masturbating until I moved here. So Really? How old are you? you? 27. Oh, jeez. Wow. I know. I love this country. <laughs> 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 yeah, life's so much better. Yeah, they should put that on the recruitment so that, poster. So was just a thing that you just didn't do? Or, or how did you... Yeah, no one just talked to me about it, really. And then it didn't... Catholic upbringing? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's weird. It's like you're Catholic, but no one. We wouldn't say we were. We're like, ah, we're not really Catholics, but you have all the. So we're not religious, but you have all of the shame. You have the all guilt. the aftermath. <laughs> you have all the aftermath. All the religion. Stuff. Yeah. And it's a very sexist country, and it's funny because I come here and people will be like, "Oh my god, they cat called me," or "Oh my god, they did this and that's assault," and I'm like, "That is not assault <laughs> in my country." Yeah. And like, that's totally fine. But it wasn't until I left that I realized like that. Like there is just a lot of, and women are sexist against women, and it's not everybody. But I've talked to more my my friends about it. Like my friend, she worked very high up in a in a job, and she's like a great degree and stuff. But she would the older men would still be like, oh whatever, honey. Like oh good for you and getting that done. And she said it wasn't until she moved here that she realized it there was more. It seems more equal in New York. Mm. Oh um, okay. They have it was a tampon ad last year, so this is a good mm. example of it. It was from the UK, and it showed you how to use a tampon. I didn't use a tampon until I was 19, drunk in Sakintos, and my friend shoved it up me because I didn't know how to. No one ever talked to me about oh, it. Jesus. Wow. Um, but it was a great bonding experience for me and my friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we all just like are just like they're just they don't like to talk about it. They're just like wing it, and everybody the parents are uncomfortable. There's no sex education. All of Ireland has HPV because we weren't using condoms, but nobody taught us about sex ed. Mm. So this tampon ad comes out in the UK and it's great because it teaches you how to use a tampon. Uh, They found out that a lot of women didn't know how to do it. And then they put it on Irish TV as well. And during the pandemic 2020, so many people complained about it that they got it taken off the television. Really? Like there's people dying globally, but they were like, we can't have women being comfortable. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. That's so it just crazy. shows that. Or there was a woman assaulted, uh, like raped a few years ago and they used a tong against her. Um, a tong? Like a Like, like her salad? underwear. Like look oh, what you're wearing. I'm yeah. sorry. Really? Oh. But at the same time, we got abortion rights. So it's like... It's a weird... Yeah. It's a we weird We finally got abortion, but thing, it's, yeah. there's a lot of back and pull or like push and pull. I remember... So there used to be... Uh, there was a, a club call the, the Boston Comedy Club like the histor- one of the historical clubs in New York City and underneath was run, run by uh, a, a Irish dude and he you know and the waitresses were like right off the boat like yeah. they were I don't know because they punched the dude in the face <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I, listen you got a tip above uh, 10% well, here well, it's well, not know, unreasonable it was, it was actually, uh, I can't remember the comic, but it was kind of like he had got a bunch of commercials and he kind of thought he was big stuff. And, and he 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 was like, I'm a C-level celebrity. And this, and this uh, uh, she just punched him in the face. <laughs> that sounds right to me. On it. Irish women are fighters. Someone wrote on my TikTok being like, Irish women are too hard to date. They're too independent. And I had a dating um expert on and he's uh he's a gay black man but he said a lot of his clients are either black women or irish women and he said they're too independent mm. and uh-huh. very like a fuck you too independent and i think irish too women aggressive are, to some no deal. just as in like i think for irish women it's more that it was a it's coming out of that we're not in the kitchen anymore right, right. Yeah, yeah. they're fighting against it yeah because yeah, i got laid a lot <laughs> because they would be like you're not gonna yeah. tell me about what to do with my body and i was <laughs> like you're right let's yeah. go fuck yeah <laughs> you know they would like it's kind of this 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 fight that they were having mm-hmm. that i had no idea i'm like yeah right, as long as you want to fuck me i'm fine yeah. i'm like you, the church is not going to tell me about. and i was like uh, yeah you show the church yeah <laughs> yeah you know what the, you know what the church would really hate <laughs> is if you fuck dante nero <laughs> yeah, if you blew um, me they'll really hate that I mean, would, I oh feel like I you would be showing them i can't imagine the pope would approve of this <laughs> See, it was so it was a lot of, and a lot of the gr- girls who were the waitresses and stuff, they were just so adamant. Because I guess because they had been, you know, this so, and this was. Dealt with it for so long. This was 
10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can imagine. It's, it's weird that you're saying it now and it, it's still pretty yeah, present. Yeah, it's not, probably not as bad as back then. But but right. also, I feel like when anything gets kind of progressive, so like I get getting abortion rights, then other things come up. Like, it's then the other voices come out. They're yeah. like, actually, we don't want that. So then it's kind of the same way here, you know? Yeah. Um, when good things happen. Then trying, to, here. trying to, how do you find the, what's the, do- so you were saying sexually, what have you, con- what have oh, you yeah. come across that you what, didn't even know was a thing? Well, I remember the first time I, I was hooking up with this guy and he asked me to like his balls, but no one had ever in Ireland ever asked. I didn't even know that was, it. I've never watched porn either. <sighs> so bar once just for the podcast, but uh, hmm. um, I, I was shocked because it's like, well, I'm naked, he's naked and I didn't know how to do that because if you've never you yeah know, if you've never licked balls yeah do you like put it shove it in your mouth or just there like <laughs> yeah. he was like did, i can't go did, google how to do this <laughs> i had to ask him I was like how do i do that and what did he say he was <laughs> like just <laughs> lick of your tongue <laughs> <I was> like <laughs> okay and it's just you feel so silly then you're just like well <laughs> the and thing about sex is that if you think about it it's yeah, all it's, silly it's all, silly. It's yeah. all yeah. silly and disgusting <laughs> like even when it's not yeah. would you like if just, just yeah taking, even if you go taking hey, your uh, thing and i think Jam that it. up in me, will you? It's uh, yeah. Like get anywhere it up else in there. you would jam something, Come on it's there. weird to do it. Come on, trooper. Yeah, get up in there. <laughs> I remember when I came when I started comedy and Casey James Lango had this bit about how a girl gave him a dry hand job. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh, I was God. like, "What? We're not. What are we meant to? Do? I didn't know." And then I was like texting my girlfriends from my home, being like, "Did you know you're meant to wet your hand?" And I was like, "Maybe it's because you guys don't have foreskins." But no guy ever in Ireland ever asked me to put Just wet on my hand. So really? I had no idea. Wow! And this is what, so, all right, so fascinating. Go ahead, go uh, ahead. Are hand jobs prevalent in Ireland? Yeah, we okay. do it at like 14, 15, okay. fingering and all of that. But I think it's a it's a population of people who don't talk. So we don't ever say what you we need or want. And we, don't yeah, know yeah. How, we don't even know how to explain it. So if a girl is giving you a, a dry hand, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if it's a foreskin thing. But let's say if they want a wet hand job, they're like, well, it's better I'm getting a dry one than not one at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know? you got to speak it's up, fellas. Attitude. You got to, yeah. You I know. wish they had it. But it's the same. I was in a relationship for three years and he, I never masturbated during sex with him. And that's the only way I orgasm. But he didn't say to do it or... He didn't really know about the clip that much, you know, so oh neither boy. of us, we were... Wow. It's the yeah. blind leading the Irish. It's, yes, that's what it is, blind leading the blind. It's so true. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, but that's how you figure it out, because I didn't get a sex talk or instructions from anybody. It's weird. Like, I got a sex talk, but I had already had an orgy by the yeah. time I got huh? <laughs> by the time By the time your dad reached you, it was way too late. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he, he gave me, I got the banana... The condom, I don't, I don't you. I, I'm looking at you like you would know. But so there's no, a, I didn't get that. so there's a, there's a banana. Uh, a father will give when he teaches him how to use a condom. A lot of times they'll take a. Did you get the? You didn't get the. That banana. would be a waste of a banana, Dante. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my house. Are you kidding? <laughs> you didn't but, get the banana. No, I don't. I don't recall getting any sex talk. In but school. I was aware of it. We did get it. Uh, we did have sex education in high school. Yeah, actually but that. by th- by that no. point i was already like in high school is like freshman or sophomore year yeah. i feel like that's way too late to give the sex talk it should I be mean, a lot earlier freshman or sophomore well, high school yeah i mean, I mean the high school the be. high school that i went to i mean what are you high school's what 13 dude i'm 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 latino by that time i yeah. mean that's you're already you're 5 years into your career yeah. yeah yeah um yeah it was a, it was a com- like my dad was much older so he, he he wasn't comfortable with it, you know, yeah. comfortable with having the the conversation. But I mean, everybody else in the, you know, I had a bunch of I hung out with a bunch of older guys, and when I was like eleven, I used to they used to watch porn. They, they so my mom like babysit kids. She raised a major portion of the kids around in this neighborhood, yeah. and so there were these kids who were older than me. Like when I was eleven, they were going to college, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, like that. <clears throat> So I could hang out with them, and she trusted them. I don't know why the fuck she would trust those idiots, but they, um, you oh, know, the they, guys who are like to, just to watch you. Like I could go, like I was eleven years old, and I could hang, in the summertime, like I could hang out with them until two, three o'clock in the morning, as long Jesus, as that's... as long as I was at their house, and them, yeah. whenever I would come home, they would, my mom would make sure you, you know, they they walk you home, and they would walk me, but they lived in the top floor of the same kind of brownstone like this but they all lived up on the top floor and they had 
corn and beer and weed and fuck. Mm-hmm. It was just a fucking. They used to pay. We, you know, before they cleaned up Forty Second Street. Forty Second Street used to be like, uh, uh, like just hookers, peep shows, porn, rest, yeah, yeah, people like you. They they'd have a. They used to have like a, a round thing with a stage, and you could put quarters in, and then the the. the the window would go up and there'd be naked people in there fucking or it's like Amsterdam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, but they could but uh they cleaned it up. That's where all the Disney stories <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and Where your teddy bears are, they used yeah. to be heiresses. Yeah, yeah, the M&Ms, <laughs> you M&Ms, you M&Ms, you get M&Ms, right M&Ms now, and yeah. pussy. Yeah. Um <laughs> But it, um, you can't go into the M and M store and go, Hey, you still you guys still got pussy in here? Yeah. No, yeah. no, what? just oh, M and M's, pussy flavored. M&Ms. All right, fine, I'll take oh, the peanut one. The first time I said pussy, that sounded so really? weird out of my mouth. Yeah, it was pretty good. Pussy, yeah, nice <laughs> emphasis on it. I've never yeah. liked the word pussy, but there's no other word. Vagina. Though. Vagina's too like lick medical. My vagina. Yeah, that's you always also feels say. Weird. You say eat vagina. We don't say that. we say lick it. Lick it. Lick, you lick said vagina. Eat, eat lick. Um, like we say eat pussy. Eat we pussy. don't say eat vagina. <laughs> yeah, vagina's too clinical for me. Like yeah. it's too. It's eat a little pussy. bit like I feel like a girl would get turned off. You're like, hey, I want to eat your vagina. <laughs> She'd be like, She'd like, get the fuck <laughs> away from me, <laughs> you weirdo. <laughs> uh, um, but they used to. These all the guys used to pay. They would slip them. Like we literally, we're talking about movies like you go to sit in the porn movie theater yeah. and they would pay the guy slip the guy extra 20 to get me in and i was like 11 and they would sneak me in i'd have a hat on <laughs> should i be able to just throw with a hat on and i'd go in and we watch we watch porn and, and karate movies oh jeez yeah what combination the, the po- and jack off to which one though you don't want to <laughs> well, you, you gotta thing, time it right but this is the thing you 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 know like you don't want to be like, so when's like literally gonna porn is in your po- is in your pocket now yeah. you know there's tits in your pocket right now and you I, had to store it and jack off later memory from, memory. from the me- yeah so, so i feel like we were much more creative it's better i think that's better because now people are more desensitized and i'd imagine yeah. the porn then was just like having sex whereas now it's like fucking people are dying you're like choking them Ru- and they're Ron, like Ron Bennington once said he goes man I'm so desensitized he goes the only thing that gets me off anymore is kicking a football out of a woman's cunt <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I always say you know you, you clicking on windows on internet porn and you ever get to the end of the internet like there's there's nothing more you, you, hit you gotta go back you, you gotta go back <laughs> you gotta go back but um, I had the thing I think I had so many tabs open uh, on my phone at one point that it your internet failed. No, it didn't <laughs> fail. But the counter on the bottom usually tells you how many tabs. If you go past ninety nine that are open, <laughs> it just it just has a guy shrugging his shoulders. <laughs> like ah man, it's just too high. I don't know. It's just that's a lot. Can't you keep counting? Like ah, it's too much, bro. We need an abacus. We got to bring in a group and of specialized. So the, how's, how's the dating? The difference in the dating or, or the approach? Um, I find that here, uh, men in New York City, the ones that I've dated, mm-hmm. have. Um, I thought exclusive was relationship because if you're acting like you're in a relationship at home, you're just in a relationship. And no, it's not. It's not spoken. It's just understood. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Maybe, maybe there's an Irish listener listening now, being like, "Nah, it's different now." But when I was back there, yeah, and I'm from a small town, so mm-hmm. it's different. But here, it seems what like town? Uh, it's in Kildare. It's called East. Wow. Uh, that where the small. first Guinness was ever made. really yeah, originally. is that where the Guinness factory is? No, like, it's no, in Dublin no. now. Okay, is uh-huh. that true? Or is that one of those things that every town says? Like, no, no, we're the, the, first the Guinness ones. family still live there. Oh, the, really? Like, great, great granddaughter or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, There's a castle yeah. and everything, but it's still like it's a fucking shithole. Um, I wouldn't write like I mean it's fine if you want to live there and have I don't know it's not great. Um, but what was I saying? That what did um, we ask you? We what just did you ask track. me? The guy, uh, the, the approach. Approach oh, of dating, men. Oh, dating. You said the oh, because so guys here, that you've dated here. Yeah, I've had a guy ask me to be exclusive, but, you know, and you, we've seen each other multiple times a week. We'll meet the friends, come to shows, and then, like, a few months later, they'll be like, well, you're not my girlfriend. I'm not really looking for a relationship. I just want to keep doing this. And I'm like, this is a relationship. <laughs> yeah. So there's, yeah. I find that a little strange. Or the opposite of, like, being like a boyfriend but not wanting th- yeah you have to be very specific on what you want here which yeah. is a little different you think that's real you, dante huh? or that what it's is a that? scapegoat dude. right yeah it's a scapegoat it's it's sort of like if you didn't if 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 you didn't ask me and yeah. we didn't have the conversation then you don't assume 
that it's something that it's not simply because you didn't ask. But that, but which is ridiculous because the actions are you're seeing the person loads, you're calling them, talking to them every day. Yeah, but you could be seeing somebody else loads. I mean, how do you have the time for that? Um, well, you said well, you the, saw it. you three times. That gives him another four days. <laughs> That's yeah. another four Bam. days. Bam. Yeah. So, so I just feel like it is a little different in my country. Where, and, and also, but I guess you're all friends, maybe, or you know each other's sister or mother. Oh, I mean, okay. mean, in, in, in Ireland. In a small town. So it's yeah. hard to fuck around on your, you know. You don't need to be as explicit. Now, now I know that you have to, like, really have a conversation and say what you're looking for and all of that. Yeah, it's, just yeah. Like, it's a good, good way. It's a, it's, it's a weird thing. Um, but I find that... Um, Women will make the assumption that you're in a relationship if you're acting like a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Just assume it, whereas men will use it as a scapegoat, unless, of course, the woman has another guy. Yeah. So I, there was a, a friend of the show, I won't get into it, but he he was dating a few girls or whatever, and then uh, this girl that came over to date him, uh, she, he, I think he was out of the room, and she found somebody else's panties underneath the bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that. so he goes, uh, you know, what I do, what should I do? And I was like, well, you didn't have, if you didn't have a conversation, then the assumption can't be that this is something that it's not. Because even, I mean, to be really honest, even if you say let's let's have a relationship, there's still um, parameters about that as well. I mean. Yeah, but I also, I think that, okay, and I'm coming from a different perspective. I think that's kind of fucked up because if your actions are big things so i say i have two guy friends and they both are seeing this these girls these two girls mm. multiple times a week bringing them for dinners t texting and talking to them every day but they said to me well i don't really want a relationship that's not what i'm looking for and then i was like then see them after 11 p.m go for drinks with them entertain yourself with your friend or communicate that because they're not yeah. having, they're not willing to communicate and say. I, I agree with that. Because Be your 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 actions are, you're taking them out for dinner, you're you're sleeping together, um, and like unless, I just think even if you have, even if that you say to the girl, well, we didn't have the conversation, she can still be kind of like, I know, but your actions were like you've met my friends, like we we've been yeah, spending I, so much I, time together. I'm just saying it is you're 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 dodging a bullet. Both men and women, if you're in straight relationships, right, should probably both have the conversation at the start. Say what you're looking for. You're right, both right, dodging right. bullets, but po people are well, gonna get upset. I, I think. I think the okay. So he, so he had a, uh, you know, he was saying that he found the um, the he, panties. He, he, he found she found the found the she panties. Found the panties. Yeah. I go now. So I just said to him, you know, what is the uh, what is like, the nature the, of the relationship? No, for, instance, yeah. for instance, say for instance, if she was. She was dating multiple people. If they never had that conversation, and he saw a condom wrapper in the in the in the in the garbage, yeah. and he was like, "Well, what's this?" Yeah. And she, as a as an American woman, would be go, <laughs> "What the fuck are you going through my garbage for? It's none of your fucking business." Because there's also, you know, the same thing when you talk about um. There is a level of nastiness when it's on the other foot. Or it, maybe not nastiness, but there is no, a level. No, it's nastiness. It's, yeah. it's a how dare you. It's how, right, how right. dare you uh, because. So both sides are kind of just being convenient but, and but getting what also, they want. But it's which, also a situation where, um, uh, right, it, it's, it's about this level of convenience where people don't want to have this conversation. But a lot of times people don't want to have the conversation because they want to be in a in a situation that they know is questionable but unless they have the conversation they will and, and a lot of times people won't have the conversation if they don't feel as though they're valuable enough to so it's like i, I just don't say anything yeah. and because i don't say anything I, it just keeps going on and i'll and i'll assume well they want to be chill too and there's a lot of advi wrong advice out there that says oh no you need to be chill for a couple of months and see where it goes and don't be like annoying and and don't scare someone off, which I actually kind of think is wrong. I think you should, after three dates or before you sleep with someone, I feel like you should kind of establish what you're looking for. I think anyway, because I've been. Yeah, that's uh, fair. Yeah, I, I mean, if that's, I don't. If you feel that, yeah, I don't. If it, that's what you're comfortable with, you know what I mean. But I don't think that everybody's comfortable with that. I mean, it's just yeah. I think there's women who who want to hook up and don't want to, you know, want to deal. With, I, I, you know. Well, yeah, what I'm saying in the situation is if you're looking for a relationship. So yeah, that way, absolutely. If you're just happy being casual. But he, but here's the thing. How long was he seeing that girl for? Um, a good amount of time, maybe a couple months or something like that. But my point is, 
My point is, if the shoe was on the other foot, and he had said, "Well, what's if and, she and wasn't, wasn't ready?" Defined. And say, and it wasn't defined. Yeah. And she. So here's here's another thing. Yeah, it's, both it's funny, people. Funny what you say is, and I I tell guys, you, you should never ask for the relationship, even if you want the relationship, you should never ask for the relationship because. When a woman wants a relationship, she asks. She'll tell you. She'll ask. She'll yeah. go. Where is this going? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I because, and and I and I think rightfully so because there is a, you know, and not not to say just because of children or whatever, but there's a there's, but a there's clock. an instinctual biological yeah, clock, clock. Even if you don't want to have children, sure. Yeah. Um, and if you're just doing, you know, if he's doing what he wants to do, and she, and I've never seen a woman who likes a guy in a way. Where she and really likes that it. doesn't express that she likes him and she wants this exclusivity or where is it going? All these questions though. Whereas if she's hooking up with a guy and she doesn't really like him, yeah. but she likes fucking him, then she won't bring it up. Yeah, I do think it's also rare. And again, people can correct me on this, but that a woman will for months go for dinner, see the same guy multiple times a week unless she sees a future because I know for me personally it's a waste of time. I'd rather be with my friends, I'd rather be working on my career. Right. I'm not gonna see the same guy multiple times a week if I don't if see you don't the potential want of it being further, a relationship. Yeah. But it's also because I'll you're casual. you're driven. Yeah. You know, like do, being a comic makes you I, I always say that comedy comedy breaks women. <laughs> <laughs> it really breaks it breaks you in a way because the first the first thing is um, the people you learn, you you meet in comedy. You hang I mean, out not, with some of the most that, interesting people, people in the world. Right. Some of the funniest, the most so. interesting people. There's some of the smartest people. So, you know, Even a guy going, dumb, working harder, pretty, yeah. working harder, hardly working, or that's what she said guy is yeah, not yeah. going to yeah, 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 survive yeah. the test for a, a female comedian to go out with. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, going to be lame. Oh, uh, Candy is a friend of the show. Sh- Candy Claire. Candy Claire, she... she, she was booking for New York Comedy Club, but she's yeah, out in L.A. Candy. She's a sweetheart. But I, I tell Candy this all the time. I, I said, you know, the problem yeah, is you're, candy. Bro- you're broken. You, you, you've you been with some of the most interesting people in the world, and then now you're dating some accountant, <laughs> and he goes, did you hand a one about the blah, 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 and you're like, ugh. And, and so it's, she's so bored yeah. with them. And then there's the, the level of insecurity that... that men have even when they're established there's still this kind of in the, in the context of relationships what do i do this or what do i do about that there's just no conversation and i think there's a level of confidence plus there's a level of drivenness that w- w- comics in general male female or otherwise you you got to you're working on your next bit you're working on your next thing you're, you're it's you're it's an active part so i i say i don't think you have like what you say it's it's kind of unfair uh, it, it goes either way because when a woman, when it's casual for a woman and she wants to keep, keep you around and fuck you every once in a while, she does it. Yeah, but it's every once in a while. So I'm saying that there's a lot of these situationships where people are seeing each other multiple times a week. These me- and if they want to keep it, if a woman wants to keep it casual, she'll put fuck in the you. boundaries. She will. She'll, well, that's the thing. She needs to put in the boundaries too. And I think I just think because from what I've heard from my girlfriends as well is that a lot of and what I've experienced too is a lot of men will treat you like a therapist. You know, want to talk to you every single day, want to see you at least three to four times a week, want to mm-hmm. be involved in your life, but want to keep the door open for if another option. They just want to fuck around. other people. Sure, and sure. it's like, so yeah. they're not just keeping, and like, that's the thing. Casual to me should be like, let's have drinks at 10 p.m. and fuck, and you don't stay over. <laughs> right, right. You know, right, and keep yeah. it at those, and everybody needs to keep those. Yeah, but what if you want him to stay over? I yeah I just think it I'm I'm I think people are maybe very different here or something no, or pretend that they can isolate so certain people can't isolate feelings and I, time I, spent and you know what I, I I don't know if certain people can do I think certain people can do it for certain people yeah I guess and there's so. other people who they're just not really that interested <laughs> like I'm just not that into you and so it's okay I like the sex is good but I don't really like you. Um, but then you, so you wouldn't want them to stay over because you'd be like, go away, I need to sleep. So what you're saying, I mm, still feel I don't like know, I like, I kind of like no, uh, it, I cuddling like, and stuff. Yeah, I like the Because cuddle. you're lonely? I, no, <laughs> I just physically liked it. Like, it wasn't yeah. just fucking and like, I enjoyed the cuddling part. To the and point you can where enjoy I had cuddling to, with someone that you don't have into, oh, like yeah. strong feelings for? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Now I couldn't do that. Yeah. I don't. I'm even people I have strong feelings for. I'm like, okay, that's enough now. Can you sit on the other side of the couch? Yeah. <laughs> so, so again, I'm coming from this with an Irish woman's perspective. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's very different. You're still breaking down a lot of stuff that's in there from generations but and also, your upbringing. But I also think that's okay too. I think yeah. it's okay to. I would. I feel like it's a huge waste of time for me when it's not someone I'm going to see myself. I would rather be with my friends. That's fair. That's I would rather enjoy my own yeah. time. Now so. that's also again being in comedy. You lead a very interesting. Different Life. enriched life where just time like is hanging out or right, look, hanging out we were hanging out with Sherrod at the cellar yeah and who's more fun to hang around with <laughs> just <laughs> just to sit on a corner and just watch him just smoke act, and just, just act like a maniac act yeah. like a maniac and then like <laughs> just saying funny shit smart shit and then just heckling people that walk by going you know <laughs> this this guy looks like a Frankenstein and this <laughs> and that like that's just fun so yeah, right. that different. again is not gonna come it's gonna be it is somebody has to really supersede that energy. No, you're right. For what you said, especially for women, because I've had men be intimidated. They love the oh, fact absolutely. that I'm a comedian, but then it comes up in like, oh, yeah. like a guy being like, he said something like, I'm not, you know, your comedy, I'm not your target audience. But then when I ended it with him, he was like, oh, I missed this. This video you made was so funny and you're so funny yeah. and all of this. And I'm like, OK, well, for the f- three months we dated, you were actually like nagging me. Yeah. But now... So that I've comes had a because guy he's broken me. on the inside. You had yeah. a, a boyfriend? Heckle? Yeah, yeah, he was drunk. He heckled me while you were performing. While I was performing, and you you were dating him. I was. We were. He had told me he loved me. I mean, te- what did he say? I can't remember. What was the was heckle? A, he was an alcoholic. Oh, Jesus, he was uh, an Irish guy. Uh, Not to stereotype. <laughs> That's why I don't drink. I have to balance it out. <laughs> um, You're trying to get one on the scoreboard. Like, no, we don't all drink. We don't all drink that much. I still drink a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he heck- yeah. I mean, Jesus, that's crazy. Yeah, but I, you know, listen, I find. It, you know, and all, all you know, I've been doing comedy twenty years, and I've girls love it, right, and then hate it. Yeah, you know, they love you for the same reason. But they, they hate a different aspect than men do. What the difference is, women hate it. The time is what they hate that you're not no, around. That no, you're they hate that you're you're dope. Like <laughs> when you when you when you are, when you have, when they've established that you're. They like you because you're a dope. You're a dope guy. You're just a, a dope person. You're funny and interesting. And then when they find out that you're really as dope as you really say you are, then they're like, "Well, wait, like, what? What am I supposed to, like?" Yeah, it brings out other people's insecurities. Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah absolutely. because they're without like, "Well, I'm not f- as funny, or I'm not as um, cool, or I'm not." And so it has. Look at your friends. Look yeah. what you do. All and these girls are flocking to you, or yeah. they probably feel like they have to be always. Yeah. Yeah, they, it's like it's like, but you don't understand. You're not here for that. Like, uh, you're, it's, it's almost like what you're saying is, I'd rather be with my friends because your friends are <laughs> way more interesting than they, you know. I mean, so you have that supplement. That's why I always think it's good to bring your girls to the shitty shows. Don't just bring them to the good ones. Make them come out and it see what it is. You know what? It doesn't matter. Look, I get what you're saying in yeah. terms of where they, where a lot of times, you know, a comic, male comics will be, and I, I guess this is anybody where they think your job is not really, like, got people, comics will treat. They take for granted the work Comics will that treat their in. job. They'll get it with a girl and they'll treat, treat their job, treat comedy as if it's a side bitch. Yeah. And it's like, uh, well, I, oh, I'm, I'm on my way home. Well, I'm, uh, you know, uh, well, I'm going to take these. Da- you, you have to make it. You have to say, this is what I do. Yeah. And you're going to risk. Because the reality, I mean, my first wife, I, I, my first wife, I, we divorced because I was doing comedy. So I, I had a, a great day job, pension thing. Well, I'm almost getting ready to wrap up that and retire from that and get a pension and the whole thing. Um, but... Um, when I started doing comedy, she was very much into it. She used to come to the shows and stuff. Then all of a sudden, she stopped coming to the shows, which was, I was fine with because, I mean, this is work for me. Yeah, yeah. I guess, you know, it's like you're out till 2, 3 o'clock. As much as it's fun, it's still work. I mean, and then I had to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning and go to work in the morning. So I get why you wouldn't want to hang out. But ultimately, she, she was like, well, I don't think that um, – a married couple should be away from each other and, and so and then she went for her master's degree but she did it online and then when at a period of time when you do some 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 master's degrees or some programs where you actually have to go to the college where you're doing it online mm. and so she had to go and take tests and then she had to get up a, a room and then she wanted me to go and stay in the hotel room while she went to school during the day and trying to f- and I, it just was like it was so it was so interesting that when the, when the shoe was on the other foot yeah 
then I remember specifically I got a I had got one of the biggest breaks at or early on. It was a there was a, a show in uh, Holland? in Holland, yeah, called Raymond is late. It was like the Jimmy Fallon of of Holland, and they would take New York comics and, and ship them out there. And I went out there, and you, you'd stay out there for like a week and film and hang out and do shows. And she was like, "I she didn't want me to go," and I was like, well, "I'm I'm yeah, going. This is this is happening." Sounds and, like just one week. Yeah, and then she she stopped talking to me a week before. Um, she didn't call me mm. the whole time I was in Holland. When I came back, I was, you know, I, I came back in the house, and she still I, she wasn't like I'm, I missed you, and I, and I just I stayed spent the night there one night, and then I moved out the next day. I go, I'm not. Yeah, well, that's not supportive. You have to be a team. And the thing is, you just, yeah, for your personality is you have to be with someone who's, you're also okay with them going off and doing their own thing. And her personality is she needs to be in like a very codependent. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, and it was, but here's the thing. It was codependent until yeah. she needed to. So right. She, she's probably the most selfish person I've ever met in my whole fucking mm-hmm. life. But that, that's and a And you whole work n- in comedy. Yeah. yeah so and that's, that's and covered I mean, a lot of ground. And and but the but I think what happened was I made a decision because the decision wasn't about comedy as much as it was about somebody who's just is unsupportive and doesn't really care w- about your happiness that you're 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 there to make her happy and do what mm-hmm. she wants and, and and it's just but you you know you get to a point where you learn this I, I, but I I still think there's a you know you you I've had girls that dealt with me that didn't want any you know to just let's hang out let's do this and didn't want more yeah um until they did want more and then when they did want you know what i mean it was kind of a no and everybody's different too i also want to say when you say hmm. my friend a lot of my friends aren't comedians okay. right, right, right i have a big irish group so i think even if i weren't doing comedy i i'm not a i'm also like the type of person i don't really like going on all these dates i don't know i don't know how to explain Fair it Fair enough i, I mean, like yeah. You like being in a relationship. Or you don't being like single. or being <laughs> right, 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 Yeah, right. yeah. So, I just think You don't like the courting like process? The courting process? No, I I I feel kind of nervous when it, I don't find that like a lot of fun when you don't really know where you stand or you don't really know where you are or you don't know if you're allowed to talk to someone else or I I feel a lot of like you just don't so you, yeah that's that guilt again it's like kind of <laughs> dealing with that guilt again he needs a book of rules that were written <laughs> to give you the guidance like, yeah yeah well, like i'm in Some a re- structure i'm in a relationship now yeah and it was the easy so in six years i've been here i've had that alcoholic that was wild mm. i dated a I call him Russian for my podcast, but he's not actually Russian, but it's over there. Mm-hmm. Um, but he asked me to One say One of those Russian. Soviet uh, yeah. satellite yeah. countries. And like he was like, he checked my pulse to see if I was lying. It was already passionate, but intense. Mm-hmm. Checked um, your pulse to see if you were lying. Okay. Like, yeah, I don't know. Was he you know, KGB? Yeah, yeah. Like some K- yeah exactly. Shut up, Katie, where you I were even, last night. And he's night. bad at it because I wasn't lying and he didn't believe me. Yeah. So it's like, you're not even good at the skill <laughs> you say you have. But um, so, okay, so from now on, we learn that anytime somebody takes your pulse to yeah. see if you're lying, kick him to the curb. He's out yeah. of his fucking mind. All right? But those are guys who asked me to be like in relationship very quickly, and I was happy to have those uh, established. But then they were like very intense and possessive mm. and controlling. Whereas my relationship now, you know, it was a few weeks, and then he was like, "Do you want to be like, are we exclusive?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's cool." And he was like, "Well." It's pretty much the same as a relationship, so can we just call it a relationship? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. And it was just like pretty easy to yeah, establish yeah. those. But he also has been looking for a girlfriend, so mm-hmm. he. But it wasn't like too fast, or mm. it was at a nice. No, but well, that, even that is 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 subjective. Too fast, not too. All of those. But are I mean, because that's you're so right. Because I, I, it was like a month. Whereas for someone else, they'd be like, "What are you? That it has to be six months." Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but for yeah. me, it was perfect. And I and, and I totally get that. I'm not. You know, I'm not judging that. I'm yeah. just saying I, I think to to talk about it as as, as if this is a norm, that any of it is of, of no, a norm. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, if you don't want to lick balls, you don't got to lick balls. No, you know I love licking balls. <laughs> it's, I actually, though, I then a few years later was slept with an Irish guy, and I thought this is like this great new trick I know. And right. then when I licked his balls, I swear, his soul nearly left out of his body, and not mm. in a good way. He screamed. He was like, Oh, Jesus. Because he didn't like that, and no one had done it before, so... It's. I thought it was this thing then that oh, but I agree with you completely, and yeah. I'm. That's why I keep saying this is from my perspective yeah, and yeah, where yeah, I grew yeah. up and how things are. But uh, 
yeah i think there's no because i've had i'd had a girlfriend be like oh my god he asked you to be his girlfriend and she's irish and she was like after a month that's so, you guys are going too fast that's so soon and i'm like i'm so happy now when we're like yeah. And you know we say I love and you and stuff, and, and she's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know, but you, you know, know everybody Katie, has different but sh- timelines. She is working right. very subconsciously to sabotage that, so she's not wrong. <laughs> no, no, you, no. You'll she's see great. the foundations later. No, no, she's I, like I, super supportive and has met him. But it's just again, I'm a, I'm like very passionate, and I like, I like, r- I rush into things a little bit as yeah. well. So, and but I like like love and I, I don't know the goofy shit. And yeah, like, not too, pa- not too romantic. Like sometimes see, a guy will be looking at me and I'm like, such a contradiction. I, She's like, I like love, but I don't want to go the balance go that guys have sleep. to, to get deal out. with. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's more because I guess again, uh, I'm so my friends would call me like a hopeless romantic in Ireland, but even I'm not that romantic because we get a little cringy by that stuff. So yeah. I think here people are more romantic, and I've had to like yeah. adjust to that a little bit. So I do like Does love, it, it but I like throws you off if somebody's too. Is well, he just, why is he romantic? Or he's a little romantic. Yeah, he's romantic, right. but it seems ingenuine because it seems like movie shit. So love to me is like <laughs> someone who like be there f- that week that you went away. Yeah. like that's a measure of love for me. So it's like. Do they support you? Do they check in on you? Do they love that you went away for this week? When you come home, are they ready there for dinner with you? Like, I'm so happy you're back. Or like, if something bad happens, are they going to be there for you? Those are things. So I love love because I want a partner. I want like someone to get through this shit with. Right. But like, if you're like, here's flowers. I'm like, oh, that's nice. They're going to be dead in three days. (laughs) You know, but... Um, if it's genuine, that's fine. But sometimes, like, I don't want someone like singing like Juliet, Juliet outside my window yeah, or whatever. But you gotta. You, I mean, so here's here's the thing that I've I've learned uh, with <laughs> all of my. I'm you learning. I'm a contradiction. I want to get it in Katie's all eye. Uh, it's making me even brighter, eyes. wider than I am. <laughs> all of, all of my horn and everything. Uh, you. What I find is that there there is no norm. Um, you have to have enough value in yourself. So that you can create the standards that you're comfortable with, right? And that's exactly, and, and that's, that's what, what I've I mean. done. Yeah, right. So even though you're saying you're a contradiction, I'm saying, no, that I've dated guys who will fucking buy you everything under the moon and be like, you're the, I've never met a girl like you, but then not want a relationship. So it's like, right. you have you have people who yeah. are overly romantic, but it doesn't mean anything long. So I, I'm just well, more. I don't know if it doesn't mean anything. I, I think you can't make that assumption because somebody it could make. my situation. Right, right. The, you That's can't what make. Because you couldn't. I can't make that assumption. In your mind, you're you're romantic. In other people's mind, you're not. Yeah. The, the point is, I, I think instead of making a, a value judgment on it, you go, well, this is what I like. And you have every right to, to like or not like whatever you do like but you just said i was a contradiction when no, i just well, said exactly what i like and what i don't like right, right no but i'm but i'm saying when you're saying i'm when you say i'm romantic or i'm not when you make in those my th- mind in your mind and, and that's what i this mean this is what is romance to me so but romance I, to me is like being there for someone being supportive and i think those are those things but you could have those things and have somebody who still buys yes i buys do and i do now things and stuff right so but so it didn't before right so what I'm, I, would I guess what I'm saying the is the, the, the important is understanding what your value is and allowing and, 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 and feeling as though that you could have what you want no matter how contradictory or not contradictory or how intense it is or how not intense it is, whatever it is, you deserve what you want. And, and I think what happens is a lot of times because people are what I call, it's what I call shoplifting the pussy. Yeah. It means you're with somebody and you know that you don't really fit. So you're adjusting and you're compromising what your happiness is in hope that it works. Them. But it's them. it's going to fall apart because you don't you, you don't you don't believe you deserve it. You don't believe you deserve it. You you're in a situation and I'm not saying you what you're saying in essence is just the opposite. You're saying this is what I want and this is what I be- I believe I deserve, which is what I'm saying is not a standard of is it overbearing? Is it not? Is it romantic? It doesn't even matter. The fact is, when you understand what your value is as a as a person, and, and you understand what you bring to the table in terms of uh, you you know the, your particular character, you believe you got to believe that you deserve those things. And if somebody doesn't fit into that mold, that a lot of times I think people are are um, they take it personal because. Mm-hmm. 
I, I, I think there's I'm, something wrong that they've done something wrong or, or that they're so, broken. Or something wrong with you. Do you right. know what I mean? It's but like it's just an insecurity. And I do agree sure. you. And the reason why I'm able to nearly articulate contradictions is just because I'm 30. I know what I like. And I haven't been yeah. in a relationship longer than three months in America because as soon as I see it's not what I want, then it's a waste of time for me. Yeah. I'll walk away. You pull out. You yeah. get out of it. How do you think that, got, how did that, how did you get to that point where you figure, because some, so often or not when people are insecure about themselves, they don't, they don't go, I don't, I don't want this. I don't like this. They'll, and they'll just put up with it. Do you, do you understand what I mean? What What about your upbringing or you or how did you get to this point where you go, I know what I want, this is what I want, and I deserve that? Well, I haven't spoken to my mother in 13 years, and she was very ab- like emotionally abusive. Okay. She's like very unwell, and I have a really good relationship with my father because of it. Mm-hmm. But, and he left when I was five, and then I stayed until I was 18. So as far as I'm concerned, I've done my time. <laughs> <I get laughs> with that. Shitty v- and I've I dated you. her as well. Yeah, yeah. And so oh, I had yeah. to really like be like, like after a month or two if I like the pulse checker the reason why I didn't think that was weird is because it's stuff I grew up with mm. so I had to be like okay this isn't right and start building up a value and a sense of the what only I thing deserve. you thought was odd you're like oh checking the pulse I thought you just check the eyes oh, that's <laughs> what we do in my place the, yeah the, uh, so so you come from now I, I don't you know if this is too much to ask is, is was your mom like boy bipolar or was she a was there an abuse or what what was it's undiagnosed so she never wanted to get help so uh-huh. i don't know i think it's either bipolar or borderline mm, sounds like my mom all right but yeah yeah i yeah, just yeah. i as soon as i was 18 i was like i've done enough time and i just yeah. enough of this abuse and stuff and yeah, yeah, yeah. so how did you not internalize that in a way that you 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 start to think that you deserve this uh, that I started to think I did. You know, no, I'm saying you know, a lot of times when people will go through this abuse, yeah, they will internalize this abuse and go, "Well, this is what I deserve because it, this is what they were accustomed to." How did you did it? Did, How did, did you was avoid a, that? Was there a okay. situation where you felt that? Well, I did think did, I, I okay. used to like want to. The, the option was either leave when I was 18 or kill myself, and I'm glad I picked leave. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, don't Good kill option. yourself if you're listening to this. It gets better. But also, I have my father and my dad mm. remarried. A really lovely woman. She was much younger. They're still together, um, and she's a she's a social care worker. So she was pretty clued in on like she's good at articulating things. Mm-hmm. And um, I spent every second weekend with them, so I kind of got to see like. And they had a bunch of kids, four mm-hmm. kids who are yeah. like they are my brothers and sisters. But I got to see what it looks like, what it's supposed to exactly. look like. Exactly. And uh-huh. then my grandmother would always when my mother was going off on whatever things she would be like you know she's crazy or you know she was kind of so it has a lot of voices that i think a lot of other people a lo- a alternative yeah. voices wow that's dope that's yeah dope. but i mean it took a, even over here yeah, there were situations where I, I look back and i go oh i was insecure because of like even when guys tell me they love me and stuff it's like hard for me you personally know. because it's like oh well love to me is like someone throwing dishes at you or you know right, so right, i have yeah, to really yeah. adjust yeah. so so that's probably you haven't why thrown a sponge in my face once what kind of relationship <laughs> yeah, are we yeah 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 it's a it's a it's an odd thing um you wanna um yeah. i want to pl- you to plug your stuff we're gonna do some stuff behind the scene a little bit if you can behind, on, the your, patreon, uh, on the patreon on the patreon all your your social media and anything you, you want to plug uh, i love it your podcast and everything so at katie will comic and everything do instagram and tiktok and twitter we do it all. i love it all <laughs> um except for twitter or i mean not twitter tiktok i don't know what those people want from me <laughs> um and then my podcast is the shift um so yeah uh, that we have guests on chat about all of this similar stuff so oh dope yeah. thank you so much Harry talk to me uh, all my stuff is at Harry Turjanian uh, check out my YouTube page I'm posting stand up clips up there some wrestling clips it's a lot of good stuff but most importantly uh, join us over at Patreon um, uh, patreon.com slash manschool202 that's where we're at we're doing some bonus content answering listener mail and talking with the listeners and a bunch of other uh, cool content uh, all my stuff just google me Dante Nero and all the social media is there uh, also I'm, I'm, I've been working on my uh, my YouTube page don't forget the Patreon don't forget the uh, if you want to do a consultation with me it's uh, Dante Nero.com click on consult and you can book actual time with me to talk to me directly um GYBB get your balls back WWDD what would Dante do the sexual revolution is being podcasted um, I love y'all, man. We're going to do the rest of this and tune in for the Patreon. Sign up for the Patreon. You can get the rest of the bonus cuts. Um, we are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. 
hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero. 